Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here today. I am joined uh, today behind me with the uh, detectives from our robbery homicide unit. Uh, and today I am here to discuss the close of a, an investigation that was very intricate in nature, and we are proud to say uh, today that we believe we have all the individuals that were involved in this case in custody. This started November 21st of 2019. Our deputies responded to Bill's Way in Keystone Heights in response to an assault call. When they arrived, they found signs of a struggle, but at that time they did not find a victim. Later that night, the deputies with the Putnam County Sheriff's Office reported a man identified as Stephen Perry. Uh, he was found badly beaten on the porch of an unrelated home near the Clay County, Putnam County border. Medics transported Perry to the Orange Park Medical Center where he passed away several, um, several days later. A medical examiner uh, did rule his passing, his death as a homicide, and our detectives uh, got right on the case. Our detectives worked tirelessly uh, on this investigation and traveled to multiple states, including uh, New York and Georgia. Altogether, our detectives secured an arrest, war arrest warrants for seven people in connection to this murder. Caleb Rowe, Calvin Rowe, Travis Rowe, Doug Rowe Jr., and August Augustino Morales are charged with murder. Alexandria McNabb and Jesse Rowe are charged with accessory after the fact, after the fact to the murder. Our detectives learned Perry had given Alexandra McNabb, who was dating Calvin Rowe at the time, shoes for her son. Rowe became jealous and made threats to Perry over Facebook Messenger and through text messages. Deputies with the U.S. Marshals Service uh, arrested Doug Rowe Jr. on our warrant on November 10th in Texas. At this time, all the individuals are in custody and we truly hope this uh, can help in the closure uh, process for the families who suffered the loss. Uh, again, I'll say our detectives worked tirelessly uh, to bring this investigation to a close. Uh, again, we are grateful that for the uh, ongoing partnership that we have with our state attorney's office and for the assistance of all the law enforcement agencies uh, that helped us get to this point. Uh, it's uh, inter it's a good it's uh, to note that our SWAT team was also utilized uh, several times during this investigation, uh, and our thoughts and prayers go out to Mr. Perry's family, and we are very glad to be able to bring some justice um, of this very violent crime uh, to a close. Any questions? What was the relationship between the woman and Perry? I'm going to turn over. Um, the, uh, these questions to the sergeant uh, who led this investigation, if you don't mind. Sure. Yep, Sergeant Galvin. I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, what was the relationship between the woman Can the you repeat the question so everybody can hear it? What's it? The relationship between the girlfriend. The relationship between the, yes. the girlfriend and Perry. Um, Perry worked with the uh, Alexander McNabb's, uh, Alexandria McNabb's um, neighbor. Um, and he was actually at the neighbor's house. She had gone to the neighbor's house requesting some clothing and shoes for her son that had to attend a football banquet. Can you talk about all of the work that went into this case and why it took a little longer to get the final two suspects because the original five were arrested in August, September time? Yeah. So this case was extremely complex. Um, we had multiple offenders involved. Um, we had an extensive crime scene. Um, and, and speaking of the offenders, um, most of them have had the row last name. This was a very um, well put together, like tight knit group. Um, the family, we consider it a crime family, that's all they know. Um, so it happened to basically infiltrate them and, and get the information we need needed to put them behind bars was very difficult. And the work that went into it, traveling to different states? So the family's not originally from here, they're from New York. Um, a lot of their family members, a lot of people had information um, pertaining to this case were out of state. Um, some of them fled the state when they knew um, we knew they were involved, so it did require some travel to get the information we needed um, to do what we had to do. I know Perry's family is very grateful for all the work you all put into this to give them some closure. They say it's a huge weight lifted off of their chest. Can you talk about being so invested into this case to bring that closure to this 
grieving family. So not only was Perry um, our victim, but his best friend watched this happen. Um, so Perry was a, was a single father. He was raising a daughter on his own. Um, so we had not only him to speak for, but we also had um, Perry's family and his friend's family as well as his daughter. So we were very vested in the case from the beginning um, and stayed on course just to, just to make sure every, everybody there was, was taken care of. There was multiple, multiple people that are obviously arrested that were involved in it. Um, I can't really get into to the details of it, but there was multiple people involved in it. I have a question for Sheriff Cook. Yes, ma'am. I'm related to this case, but this past week there have been some violent crimes reported in Clay County um, where there were two women killed. As Sheriff of Clay County now, what are you doing to address and combat the crime? So the, the question is uh, regarding the two domestic homicides that we had this weekend. You know, anytime there's a homicide, it's tragic. Domestic homicide, uh, just, I mean, just terribly, terribly tragic. Uh, you know, we are uh, very committed to, to solving the domestic violence challenges that we have here in the county. In fact, um, uh, during Domestic Violence uh, Prevention Month in October, we announced the, uh, the formation of a task force here in Clay County, in the Clay County Sheriff's Office, to include uh, four deputies who will be on, um, on, uh, on the job basically 24-7 and two investigators who will do nothing but follow up domestic violence cases. So uh, we're committed to, to uh, you know, driving down any sort of domestic violence uh, crimes. And, and again, we encourage anybody who's in a, a relationship where there is violence uh, any, of any kind to, to please reach out to us and ask for help. In terms of just crime in general, though, your stance in combating crime, zero tolerance policy, I'm sure. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and, and our crime numbers are trending down for the year. Both violent crime and property crime are down. Uh, I was looking at the numbers yesterday afternoon. Our crime rate is, is down in, in Clay County. You know, unfortunately, we've had very two very high profile, very tragic domestic violence uh, homicides in this past weekend. Um, you know, very tragic. With the crime trending downward, what do you attribute that to? These guys right here. You know, um, crime, it, you know, crime is up and down you know, uh, mostly down for, for Northeast Florida. Uh, and, and, but that speaks to the, the work that the men and women who, uh, who serve our community every day. They're the ones that are going out there. They're the ones that are preventing crime. They're the ones that are getting information from community members on, on solving crime. So uh, I, I, it's, it's the work of the men and women of this agency. Sergeant Calhoun, you want to speak to that sure. real quick? Um, obviously, whenever you have this many people involved in a violent crime, you have to keep them separated. Um, obviously, our jail can only um, separate so many people. So just for the safety of our, our correctional officers and the people that work in the jail, we've moved them to uh, different locations just to keep them apart and where there's no problems. Now, the other questions we have. Uh, next, Don. Yes. Who the last two the last two, the last person that was arrested was Don or Doug Rowe Jr. He was arrested in Odessa, Texas, on on our warrant. Um, and before that, um, I believe it was Caleb Rowe. It was the one before him, right before him. Who's the one on the top right? The top right, that's Alexandria McNabb. Um, she's the girlfriend of Calvin Rowe. Um, originally, um, when this thing first took place, obviously Calvin Rowe was, was identified quickly because it, it happened in front of his residence, and she um, helped him flee to Georgia, where we apprehended him. For clarification, so McNabb went to the neighbor to ask if they had any clothes? Yes, on, yes. And uh, Perry just happened to be there. Was he guy and said, hey, happened to just be at the wrong place, wrong time, as this story would end. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.